Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the change of the chemical composition as blood moves through the body. In this video we'll cover something quite related and the dot point itself says outline the need for oxygen in living cells and explain why the removal of carbon dioxide from cells is essential. There's two parts to this. First we have to outline the need for oxygen living cells and outline just means, means we need to mention the main points when it comes to why we need oxygen for living cells. And the second part uh, means explain why the removal of carbon dioxide from cells is essential. So we have to explain what carbon dioxide does and why that's essential that we remove it. So I'll start with the first part, but before I start talking about this top point specifically, I'll start talking about something called glucose. And glucose obviously is mentioned quite a bit throughout this whole chapter. I'll go over again how glucose actually gets produced and what glucose is. So what you can see here is the equation for photosynthesis, photosynthesis, and that just means the making of sugar. So this here is carbon dioxide, and we need carbon dioxide and water, so these are our reactants, our reactants, and then we have sunlight, and in the presence of sunlight and carbon dioxide and water, we produce something called glucose. And we also have oxygen, this is our byproduct, this happens in actual plants, and glucose is the most important part here because this sunlight has lots of energy, but we can't directly use, we and plants can't directly use the energy from the sun, but we actually incorporate that, that energy from the sun in glucose. So this whole process just allows us to have lots of energy, a higher energy rich sub, uh, substance, and that we can use and that plants can use. And this here is really rich in energy because of that sunlight that has transferred energy to the glucose. Now that was how glucose is produced. And then what the plants do is they use glucose for do two different things. First of all, they can use glucose to make cellulose. And each of these balls here is a glucose molecule. And if you can see here, they're just chained up one after the other. And this forms cellulose. And cellulose is used for plants for their cell walls. So it gives them structure. It's kind of like cement. It's, it gives them the building structure. For cellulose, gives the actual plant structure. But it also uses it to make starch. Now, this is, a, this is the same, a very similar type of glucose. Again, they have a long chain of these glucoses, and that gives it starch. Now, starch is the storage form, storage form of glucose for the actual plant. And this plant needs energy for the same reason we do because it needs to make ATP, so it needs to make energy. And it has it for it stored as starch. And for example, if we look at these wheat products here, these wheat um, flowers, they're mostly starch. These are mostly starch. And they have lots of starch to make sure they can grow properly and then do their normal functions. Now we can use that starch, we can use that wheat, and we can use that starch to make different things. For example, we can make flour. So we can make flour out of that starch. And that flour we can use to make bread. So now we have food that we can eat. So we've made, we've used this star, storage form of glucose in plants called starch. We've used that to make our own food, which in this case is, sorry, <clears throat> we can say this bread. So the bread is food for us and the bread we can eat. And once we've eaten the bread, we'll actually digest it. And what happens in digestion is you have this long chain, which I, I said earlier, starch, which is a long chain of glucose. So I'll have these yellow dots being glucose. It's a long chain of them. And in our stomach, not in our stomach, but in our small intestine, which is shown here, what you can see here is you have parts of this chain attaching to an enzyme, which is this one here. And the enzyme actually breaks it into small bits again. And then once it's broken into smaller bits, we call it glucose again. So it goes from starch, which was a long chain form, and a enzyme, in this case maltase, the enzyme maltase breaks it back into its small units, which we call glucose. Another word for it is blood sugar. Because what happens next, as you can see here, is blood sugar enters our blood through these membranes, 
and is in our blood. So that's the, that's, I mean, the reason why I've shown you this was because we need to know what glucose is. It's, it's good to know. And this comes out why we need oxygen. So what glucose is, is related to, to why we need oxygen. If you actually remember the song that, from the intro, I'll sing it again. Oh, glucose, da na 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 na. Oh, sugar, sugar, da na 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 na. You help me make ATP. I've basically given you the answer for the first part of that point, which was outline the need for oxygen in living cells. Even though that song didn't actually have oxygen in it, there was no oxygen in that song. But if you remember the animation, we had glucose, which went into the cell. But with glucose, there was also this blue dot, and the blue dot was meant to be oxygen. So glucose and oxygen together help us make ATP. And I'll go over again what ATP is in a second. But what you can imagine is glucose is kind of our fuel that we put into cars. But the fuel by itself won't do anything unless we have some sort of ignition source, a spark. So our oxygen is, you can kind of see it as our spark. This oxygen allows us to actually get that energy from glucose. So glucose has lots of energy in it, high in energy because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. It was produced from the sun and then they gave that sun energy into the glucose form. So lots of energy. And we use that oxygen to get the energy out of it. So this combusts like it does in a car as well. And it produces these things here as a bipolar. It produces carbon dioxide. And you can, you can imagine carbon dioxide to kind of be like your exhaust. So you can see gas coming out of here. In this case, most of that gas is actually also carbon dioxide. Same thing for petrol as well. But this is a waste product. We don't need this. This is a waste, but it gets produced when we make ATP. But this is the stuff we want. ATP, adenine triphosphate, for long. And what this is does, this is basically energy. And what do we need energy for? Well, we need energy to move. We need energy to repair our cells. We need energy to reproduce, we need energy to grow. So all of these reasons were reasons why we need energy. And without oxygen, we wouldn't be able to produce as much ATP. We can still produce energy without oxygen, but a lot less. So with oxygen, we can actually produce from one glucose, we get about 38 units of ATP. So there's lots of energy. And we use that energy to make, to grow, to move, to repair cells and to reproduce. And so that's why we need oxygen. So all I need for oxygen living cells. It is important for cellular respiration, which is this equation here. And in cellular respiration, we put ATP, which we can then use to grow, move, repair cells, and reproduce. So basically to survive, to be alive. Now, the other part was um, to explain why the removal of carbon dioxide from cells is essential. Now, this is also really important because here we have the blood cells. And remember, this would be the capillaries, and the reason how you know this could be would be the capillaries is because there is a cell close by. So this is a cell, and the only place you're going to find cells would be close to capillaries. Arteries and veins have no cells close to them; only capillaries do. Now here you've got the red one, and uh, not the red one, but the green one, <laughs> the green one, but the yellow one. The yellow one is glucose, and the blue one is oxygen. I am not color blind; I don't know why I keep doing this. All right, so the green one and the red one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the yellow one and the blue one, which is glucose and oxygen, goes into a cell and then they form that ATP. So that's that equation here. ATP gets produced. And once you have ATP being produced, you also have this carbon dioxide, which I'll draw in purple. Not in, in gray. Oh my god. In gray. So the, the gray, which is carbon dioxide, will actually leave and go back into plasma, right? So that's what um, carbon dioxide does. And once it does, you might remember this from one of the previous um, videos, it reacts with plasma, which is water. So CO2 plus H2O, which is plasma, that's water, that combines to form hydrocarbon ions, which is the form that CO2 is transferred in plasma, but it also produces these H+, which makes it acidic. So the problem is if you have too much carbon dioxide, so this makes it acidic. If too much carbon dioxide, we produce too much of this hydrogen ions, which lowers our pH. So acidic means it lowers our pH. And if you have a lower pH, remember what that does to our enzyme activity? That will actually decrease our enzyme activity. So this year, you can imagine it to be perfect. Right now, it's all normal, normal pH. It fits in perfectly, and it will get broken down. Substrates will get broken down in products. 
and this is at our normal pH. So here, at our activity is high because everything is normal, optimum pH. Now, if you imagine we just, we wouldn't be removing our carbon dioxide, that would build up, which means that we lower our pH. So what happens now is our actual enzymes become denatured, and what that means is this is the denatured enzyme. That means the actual fit isn't perfect anymore. So this here is denatured. And then you tr try to break down the substrate. The enzyme will try it, but it won't really succeed as well as it could. So you can imagine now, because of that high CO2, our pH is so low that the pH is not 7 anymore. It's not at its ideal for this enzyme. It might be here. It might be at I don't know, 5 or 3. And that means activity, how fast these enzymes work, has also gone down, has also gone down. Which means our metabolic efficiency, our metabolic efficiency, which is how fast these enzymes work, has decreased because of those low pH levels. Low pH levels come if we have too much carbon dioxide. So we need to get rid of carbon dioxide to prevent that from happening. So I'll go over again. We need oxygen to produce energy, and we need energy to grow, move, re repair cells, and reproduce. So basically to stay alive. And we need to get rid of carbon dioxide to make sure that our pH doesn't become too low because it lowers our blood pH and our, our cell pH. So it lowers blood and cell pH. And when that happens, our enzymes become denatured. And that means it, they work less efficiently. And if that happens, that means all of our most important reactions stop working as fast as they could. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.